Now let's go for a bit of a fun uh, part of the last lecture. And fun for me, it's, it's not really something that it's super important in terms of um, usefulness, but it's more to uh, exercise your mind and see w the various weird things you can do with the monad uh, pattern. And the idea here is that we're going to try to use, or we're going to use monads to describe list comprehension. So kind of think of it as a DSL to represent the list comprehension. So suppose you have this notation, and this might be familiar to you. It's very similar to the set builder notation. And what I'm saying here is that I want to range over all elements of X between one and two. Uh, this is a list. So this is a list with exactly two elements. And I'm saying I want to range over all elements of this list in X, uh, and I want Y to be an element of this list. So in this case, three and four. Um, so for any X in one, two, and for any X, uh, Y in three, four, I want to build a new list that has that pairs every X with Y. So as you can see, pretty um, standard way to de declaratively specify how you build a list. So the contents of that would be 1, 3, 1, 4, 2, 3, and 2, 4, according to how you evaluate the, you know, evaluate first x and then uh, y. Um, and the cool thing about here is that you can actually specify um, by specifying some notion of a binder that I'm going to show you after. You can actually describe this as a monad. So you can write it, as you can see, it's very close. x is, represents this, and y represents this, and the return is this list pure cons. Okay. And then if we run it, we would see that it returns the same, the exactly same thing. So the trick here is how do we specify what is the bind um, and what operations do we need? Uh, firstly, we need to introduce a notion of the join and the join operation, what it does, it just flattens a list. So if you have a list with one, two, that is inside a list, it becomes a list one, two. And if you have a list composed of one and two, that will all be flattened. Similarly, if you have a list with one, two and three, and a list with three, it becomes a list one, two, three. So it just flattens, uh, you know, two, a list of lists into just a list. Um, so that's the join operation. Um, the implementation of it can be very succinct if you think about how folder and uh, append works. Um, so next we want to do the list pure, which just returns. Uh, so what are the two, sorry, the last point that we need to define is if we want to define a monad, we need to think what, how do we convert something, a value to a list, so, sorry, to that monad. Uh, which is the pure operator and what is the bind operator. So the pure operator takes something, a value, and converts it into the world of, of, a, of a monad. So in this case, we have uh, a simple value and we want to, if this is a list monad, converting into the monadic value would be the list of X. Okay, a list simply containing that X. Um, the, mind op the bind operator, what it does is is going to take uh, whatever up one is going to be this uh, list comprehension operation that simply takes as an input the list and it returns uh, when given a list returns a list right so that it ranges over all its elements so what we do here is we're gonna flatten uh, by applying the continuation to every element of up one so up one is going to return a list of elements and up two is going to be executed for each element of up one so if we do those two things, uh, what happens is, and this is what I want you to think. Basically, the reason I'm giving you this example is just so that you have another, uh, I want you to be able to look at um, a do notation and be able to think of it as a bind operator and then unfold the bind into its definition so that you understand what's going on. Because you will need to, if you have an error in homework, six, you'll need to be able to debug this code. And monadic code is, can be complicated to debug. So you need to have a really good mental model of what's going on behind the scenes. So firstly, we need to understand very, very 
uh, clearly, how do you go from a do notation to without do, right? So basically, each arrow becomes a bind. Uh, and uh, the pure is a, a regular function, so it just returns that. So this is what we do from one step to the next. Um, and then what I'm doing is I'm just unfolding each step. So each bind, as we saw, is just this li little line, fold right. Um, so in the second slide, what I'm doing is I'm just inlining or, or showing the contents of, of each bind. So each bind becomes a, a join. Um, and then there's a map. So then what I'm doing in each line is just uh, evaluating what is highlighted in yellow. Okay, so I'm first, firstly I'm applying, I'm performing the map, and then I'm gonna evaluate the join, and finally I have a map and some function, and I'm gonna apply that. Finally I get this, and eventually I get the whole thing. Okay, so what I would like you to do is to uh, try to go through this exercise by copy-pasting and try to run it yourself. And then confirm that you understand how do you go from the, sorry, the original example to the final result. Okay, so that you understand why does it do that step by step. So I think uh, just using a piece of pen and paper would be the easiest way. So that you can convince yourself that if you create a list, um, if you have any, ex sorry, if you have any example with uh, a monadic, a monad example, you can have a mental mo model on, on its execution. I think that's the key point here. Uh, and then I have a few more examples um, for you to think and I have the solutions on each one. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. Uh, so this is more like a homework kind of thing, optional, of course, if you want to think more about understand uh, binders, this, these are just a few examples. And uh, in this slide, I give you just a step by step evaluation of uh, the list monad. Okay, and if you go to the previous lesson, you can go through the paper, Philip Wadler's paper, I think it's a very interesting read. We'll give you a bit more feedback or, or a bit more information on how to uh, understand and why monads are important. Okay, I hope you have a good weekend and that you had fun today. Bye-bye.